splendid little things are chessmen. In fact, they're very famous chessmen. They're the Lewis chessmen. They were discovered on the Isle of Lewis in Scotland by a farmer uh, over 100 years ago who was ploughing his field. The plough broke through into a little cave. He looked in and found these weird little creatures staring out at him. He thought he'd uncovered the spirits of the earth. Well, he hadn't, and his wife told him not to be silly. They dug him up, and now they're national treasure. The originals are in the British Museum. They were left there, it's thought, by Vikings hundreds of years ago. But these are, in fact, copies of them. They're replicas done by latex moulding. And here's how you do latex moulding. First of all, what's latex? It's the gum or the sap of the rubber tree. And it comes out as a milky fluid, rather like that. That is some um, slightly discoloured. It doesn't matter if you spill it, as long as it's not on uh, material, because it, uh, it peels off when it's dry. But what you want to do is to pour it into a bottle, which is going to be wide enough to let you dip the object to be copied into the mouth. In this case, it's a pawn. It's only a narrow bottle. And to dip the bottle, you need a handle, which is made by squeezing it onto plasticine. I find that's the best. And making a base on it, which is about the same diameter as the pawn itself. Try and get that neat, otherwise you'll end up with kinks in the final article. Once you've got that set up, you dunk it into the latex. And here we go. Dunk it in there. Make sure it comes up onto the plasticine, and when you finish, stand it up and let it dry. And you can use that for these hard replicas. If they're really a bit absorbent, you can rub them with vegetable oil. That helps the whole thing release. You can even do it with your own plasticine models. All sorts of things you can make uh, plaster replicas out of. Anyway, after about an hour, that will dry. And when it does, it's going to look like that. Rather shiny and uh, distinctly coated. At that stage, dip it in again. And dip it in for about five or six coats. And after you've done that, that shiny coat will look the same, but it'll, it'll be much thicker. And that's about the stage at which you can mould it. It's going to look like that. Well, it's rather sticky stuff. It'll stick to itself. So the first thing you have to do is to powder it. Just with ordinary uh, toilet powder, that's fine. Sprinkle it over the surface and rub it in with a finger. That takes the stickiness out of it. It won't stick to itself and it won't consequently tear when you move it around. Now that's safe to handle. You've got a rather messy base down here with the plasticine, so get some scissors and cut that through. And now you can peel it off rather like pulling a jumper off over your head. It'll turn it inside out. That doesn't matter. You notice that because the plasticine's oily, it's not sticking to it, and because the plastic is hard, it's not sticking to it either. Down it comes, stretching but not deforming, and there it is, inside out, with all the pattern on the inside. Well, that sticks to itself too, so you need to powder that down. And I'll just do that if I can move this bottle so that you can see. And don't let it stick to itself without the powder, or else it's ruined. OK, turn it inside, or really right side out again. And you notice that's six layers, so it's good and thick. Without that, it's going to destroy itself and blow in it like a balloon. That fins it, fills it out. Now, to hold it there, because it won't support its own weight, make yourself a little tube of cardboard. That's cardboard and masking tape. And the diameter is really just the size of the neck. Slide that in there and stick masking tape or sticky tape or something all the way around there so no plaster can escape. It'll come up like that. And that's ready to receive the plaster. And I find by making a little hole there and hanging it up on a paperclip hook on a string, it'll hang there, the plaster weight will fill out the mould and... Everything's terrific. Well, I've already mixed my plaster. As always, put the plaster powder into the water, mix it until it's a creamy consistency, and pour it in. And you'll find that you need to fill it up until it reaches the... It's perhaps just a little thick, until it reaches just up into the cardboard. And, of course, it'll take air bubbles with it that would normally stick on the inside of the rubber. So to release them, keep squeezing that. That'll shake all the air bubbles off and... That won't spoil your final mould. And once it's sitting there, filling out the mould, you can leave it for about uh, half an hour or an hour. When you come back, it'll be like this. That's a finished one, absolutely solid. Strip off that cardboard and be careful because you can use the mould again and again.
and very carefully turn it inside out and pull it off the plaster, the way you did off the original. Here it comes now. Because of that plasticine base, you've got a bit of spare to work with. And there's the replica. And not a bad one either. Here's the original. There's the replica. You can use that mould to make any number of replicas like that. If you're working with a bigger one, like this one, you mightn't be able to fit it in the bottle, stand it on a plasticine base, keep painting it, but use about seven or eight coats. And when you finally take that one down and strip it off, like this, you find that if you've used a very thick rubber, it's held the shape really beautifully. So there's the original, there's the copy, and you can keep on making copies out of the same mold as long as it holds up. Just remember to cut their bases off. I want to know. Curiosity.